morning, our dear learners of P4. I'm happy we are meeting for the for another time. But before we start our lesson, let me hope everyone has washed his or her hands. Or if you're able, you sanitize your hands. Make sure where you're seated, where you're going to learn from, it is clean. Make sure everything that you're touching is clean. Okay, last time we looked at weather changes. We defined weather as the state of the atmosphere recorded uh, for a short period of time. We looked at elements of weather. We looked at the conditions or types of weather. Then, and uh, then we looked at specific two elements. First of all, we looked at sunshine. I left an activity under sunshine. Number one was give anyone use of sunshine to people. Uh, when you see sunshine, you can say, dress our clothes, dress the harvested crops. So you can think of any other advantage. Then the dangers, too much sunshine can lead to drought. Too much sunshine can destroy crops. They will end up drying up or rotting. So those are some of the answers. Then I left a practical activity behind whereby I told you to go out of the house, stand under sunshine and have a look at your shadow. So, then I said, at what time of the day is the shadow shortest or longest? So, in the morning and evening, the shadow is longest. Remember, the sun is just on the sides of the object or on the sides of your body. So, the shadow is formed on the other side. Then, at midday or noon, the shadow is shortest. Why is the shadow shortest at midday? The sun is directly above the object so when you see the sun is just directly above you so the shadow will be shorter than in the morning or even then we went to temperature we specifically looked at the clinical thermometer which we said used to measure the human body temperature i left an activity behind it how is the clinical thermometer useful it helps to measure the human body temperature and your answer you're supposed to have measuring human body temperature then importance of the king prevents the backflow of mercury before the doctor takes the readings then which liquid is used in the clinical thermometer that is mercury then why do doctors first check the clinical thermometer is to force mercury go back to the bulb so that that was briefly what we looked at last time now today I want us to look at a simple topic. It is part of our life, and that is personal hygiene. We are looking at personal So here I'll give you a simple task. You're going to look at yourself, look at the things you're using, and give yourself marks. Now we have personal hygiene. Look at the word personal. Make sure you spell it properly. Look at hygiene. Some of you tend to leave out I. Look at the word right now. What is personal hygiene? Personal hygiene is the general cleanliness of your body or my body and the things i use so we are saying pers personal hygiene personal hygiene is the general of the body and the things we use so we go together what is personal hygiene personal hygiene is the general Cleanliness. Check the spelling of the word cleanliness. Check 
the spelling of the body and the things we use. Remember, as we are cleaning our body, there are some things we use. So I'll give which I will be noting down some things and you look around. Things used to clean the body. Things used to clean the body. Or sometimes they can say things used to promote personal hygiene. So, what are the things that you use to clean your body? So, for me, I'll be having here one. If I want to bathe, I'll, I'll need water. And that water has to be clean. I will need a benzene. If I don't need it, if I don't use a basin, or I can use a bucket. So look around, see what you use at home. Then after bathing, what do I use to make myself dry? So I'll need a towel. So when I'm bathing, I need soap. Remember, soap is a detergent. It helps to kill germs. So after soap, if I want to brush my teeth, what do we use? We, you need toothpaste and you need a toothbrush. So I need toothpaste. So I also need a toothbrush. Still, when I'm cleaning my body, I will need a bathing sponge. Bathing sponge. All that is bathing. So after that, we'll have fingernails. Remember, it is bad to have long fingernails. What do you use to groom fingernails? So you can use a nail cutter. Then, which other part of your body do you clean? We have the ears. So we need the earbuds. I know some of you take years and years without cleaning your ears. But uh, when you're bathing, make sure you wash around your ears and as you're removing that wax, you need the earbuds. Then, still, any other we are leaving out, we have water, basin or bucket, towel, soap, toothpaste, toothbrush, bathing soap, nail cutter, earbuds. Now, when, for example, I'm having flu and cough, would I just cough and open my mouth like that? Now, for me, I'm having here, something how we call this one this one is a handkerchief so whenever you're trying to cough make sure you cover your mouth with a handkerchief you're having flu don't use your cloth or your clothes make sure you use a handkerchief so here i'm having a handkerchief so you can use this when you when you're sweating you can use it to wipe the sweat when you're sneezing you can use the handkerchief and when you're coughing you can cover your mouth using a hand kerchief. Now, remember we have to have tidy hair, so you need, we need a comb, so that our hair remains smart. So, and so many other equipment, some of you, you can use the dental floss, depending, some of you have very many things we use to clean our bodies. So, specifically, the, that is what we use, we need water, for whenever, because when we are bathing, we use that water. Benzene, that will help us for where we are going to put the water. Towel, for drying up your soap. Soap, we need it because it will help you to kill the germs around your body because it is a detergent. Toothpaste, when you're brushing. Toothbrush, bathing sponge, nail cutter for grooming nails, earbuds for removing the earwax, handkerchief, when you're sweating, you wipe the sweat. Sneezing and coughing, cough for coughing. Now, ways of keeping your body clean. Ways of keeping the body. Ways of keeping the body clean. What are some of the ways that you keep your body clean? So one, we have bath, bathing. So here we have bathing. 
But some of you have the habit of bathing, most especially boys, you bathe once a year or once a week. But bathing, you are going to add on daily, at least twice a day. In the morning when you wake up, make sure you bathe. Then uh, before you go to bed, make sure you bathe. So don't just say bathing, we say bathing daily or regularly. So I have, then we have combing the hair. Don't move out like a disorganized person. Combing the hair. Make sure your hair is neat. Then we have brushing teeth. So let you let us add in every after a meal. If you're not able to brush every after a meal, you can at least brush twice a day. Every after a meal. Why do you brush every after a meal? That is a common question. Why do you brush every after a meal? Don't say to avoid the bad smell, smell to avoid the toothy decay. No. The main reason why we brush every after a meal, you're trying to remove that those food particles that have remained in your teeth. So brushing teeth every after a meal to remove the remaining food particles in teeth. That is the common question. Don't tell us to avoid this tooth decay. Then when I go to the toilet, what do I do after using the toilet on that tree? Washing hands. Washing hands after using the toilet. After using the toilet. Now here, if they ask, why do we wash hands? So we wash hands to remove the germs. But if they add on, why do we wash hands using soap? So I said soap is a detergent that helps to kill germs. So if they say, why do you wash hands using soap? You say to kill germs. Then another way, we cannot keep fingernails long. So I have grooming fingernails. Grooming fingernails or you can say cutting fingernails short cutting fingernails short so here we have seen that what we use to cut fingernails or groom fingernails, we use a nail cutter. So I'll ask you, why is it not advisable to bite your fingernails? So remember, in, uh, when you're having long fingernails, you, that, that is a hiding place for germs. So whenever you're biting, you will be eating the germs. So it is not advisable. What you do, you get a nail cutter and you try to cut them short. So that is bathing, combing, brushing teeth, washing hands after using the toilet, grooming finger. Another way, we can also add on washing clothes because after bathing you cannot put on dirty clothes. Washing clothes. Washing. Because if you bathe then you put on a dirty cloth you will become dirty. So make sure your clothes are clean. And make sure you iron them. Why do we iron? To kill germs. So is that one okay? So here A and B, maybe what I can put down, not. We iron clothes. We iron clothes. Two, number one. One, you're trying to kill germs. Kill germs. To kill germs. 
Another one is maybe if there are some parasites around it, you're trying to kill some parasites. It can be the lice parasites. What we call the body lice, then in the air, we have what we call the, the lice now for the hair. Then another one, what we can add on, why do you need to bathe it daily? We can give you some points. So, this is number number two. We, we should bathe daily. Bathe regularly or daily why do you think you should bathe one to avoid skin diseases avoid skin diseases you have seen people having a skin disease known as ringworms so well, this one come ringworms come as a result of you failing to bathe after some time then if you're good at sharing clothes still you will get the disease too you're trying to remove the dirt from the body to remove that that from the body it can be like you've moved for a whole day you're having sweat you're having the dust, you're having all so to remove that dust from your body. We have seen why we wash our hands, we are trying to remove the germs. Why do we so nowadays they tell us use soap so that you kill the germs? We have seen why we brush teeth every after a meal to remove the remaining food particles. Is that one okay? Okay. Now I want to, I want to leave an activity behind, but before but before i can briefly talk about we also use beddings not here why do we need to wash our bed sheets you have sometimes to get time to hang your blanket in sunshine so number three we should keep our beddings clean Our buildings, our buildings clean. Most cases, make sure your buildings are clean. One, you don't want them to smell, because if you spend a year without washing the bed, just remember whenever you sleep, you sweat. So you're trying to avoid that bad smell. So one, you can say to avoid. bad smell then next we should keep them clean so that parasites do not breed in them remember when you leave them dirty parasites will start bleeding like the lice the bed bugs so to avoid to avoid the parasites parasites like Lice, bed bugs, and so many others. So, make sure your beddings, if the bed sheets, wash them. It is a, if it is a blanket or a bed cover, make sure you hang it in sunshine so that it gets that heat. That heat will help to kill all those good, tiny, tiny germs, all those tiny, tiny parasites that are within your blanket or any other bedding. Okay. Those are some of the ways why we should keep ourselves clean, why we should keep the things we use clean so that we don't get those diseases and remain healthy. So I'm leaving an activity behind. Activity. Number one, what is personal hygiene?
of his personal hygiene. Number two, why do we brush our teeth every after a meal? Then number three, why is it not advisable to bite fingernails? Why is it advisable? Okay, now know this. Why is it advisable? So that is the activity I'm leaving behind. Make sure you read the question, understand it, and give the correct answer. So as I end our lesson today, since we are talking about personal hygiene, remember to stay clean because that is part of personal hygiene. Remain clean, wash your hands, brush your teeth, wash your clothes, iron them, wash your bed sheets, lay your beds, and remain healthy. Till next time.